On Saturday, August 31st at 7.30 p.m. at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, it's the rising Virginia Cavaliers against the defending ACC Coastal Division champion, Pittsburgh Panthers. A pivotal and huge divisional matchup right from the get-go. I mean, this one has gigantic implications for that race in the Coastal and the honor to play Clemson in the ACC Championship game. Who has the edge in this one? Who's going to take an all-important W home in week one? We're covering it right here, quick, fast, and in a hurry on Lego on Fuego. Hey. Wahoo! Man, it feels good to be fielding our best team since, like, 1995. Eight and five last year, and we're the talk of the Coastal Division in 2019, and with good reason. Bronco Mendenhall has this team headed in all the right directions, and on said team is a quarterback that he should have all the confidence in the world in. Bryce Perkins in 2018 had 2,680 pass yards, 25 touchdowns, and just nine interceptions. Ouch! Now that's what I call Lego on Fuego. Fire! We're also fresh off of straight taking it to South Carolina, 28 to nothing in the Belk Bowl in an exceptional way to end the season. On defense, we retain cornerback Bryce Hall, who will be a pivotal leader in this week one matchup against a very good Pittsburgh Panthers team. Man, props to Virginia and all of their accomplishments last season. Seriously, I'm not going to be like all the other guys on here that I've seen on this show and beat down their opponent. I give kudos where kudos is due, and it's due here. I am, however, on this channel to play devil's advocate, and so I'm going to do so maturely. I'll start with the fact that you're losing Olamide Zacchaeus. Did I pronounce that right? Not only did he have a lot to do with that Belk Bowl beatdown in which he had 12 receptions for 100 yards and three touchdowns, so he basically was the output in that one. He also had mind-boggling numbers for the season as a whole, with 93 receptions, 1,058 yards, and nine touchdowns. No matter how good the next guy up may be, he's not Olamide. Furthermore, with all the research I've done, I've noticed that you're extremely weak at the defensive line position, and you also lost safety Juan Thornhill. On offense, you'll be without Jordan Ellis at running back. All he did was rush for 1,026 yards last season and 10 touchdowns. Lastly, you'll be without two of your offensive linemen from the 2018 team. In other words, there's a lot of plug and play going on for the 2019 season, and it would not be to my liking were it my own team. On top of that, you're going against a pit squad that is ascending in my, uh, well, slightly biased opinion. In our final six games of the season, our defense only allowed 323 yards per game. We also only gave up 48 combined points to you guys, Virginia Tech, and Wake Forest. Considering those offenses, that's pretty impressive. We keep cornerback Dane Jackson, who in 2018 had 14 pass breakups and four forced fumbles. Four forced fumbles, four forced fumbles, four forced fumbles. As well as our safety, DeMar Hamlin, who had an astonishing 90 tackles and two interceptions. Pat Narduzzi is now the longest tenure coach at Pitt since Dave Wanstead from 2005 to 2010. Maurice French comes back as a talented wide receiver who had 35 catches for 515 yards and six touchdowns. And Taysir Mack also returns. He had 22.3 yards per reception last season, so he's our deep threat. Those guys will have Kenny Pickett throwing him the ball, and he of course has the experience to get it done. Along with his new offensive coordinator and former University of Massachusetts head coach, Mark Whipple. Dude, I really appreciate you being an adult and acting far more mature than some of the other fans of teams that I've seen on this show. So in return, I'll do the same for you and go over some of the advantages that I see us having over you guys respectfully. There is of course a reason for replacing your offensive coordinator. The Pittsburgh offense in its final three games had only 26 points total combined, which is just an average of close to nine points per game. Worse than that, on that offense, you're losing seven total starters, including four offensive linemen. That normally wouldn't be a terrible thing as you would have time to produce those guys, but when you're playing Virginia week one of the season in a very crucial matchup, it does matter. Kenny Pickett does return, yes, but even with his experience, I see that more as an advantage for us. He was only 180 for 310 last season, completing just 58.1% of his passes. He only threw for 1,960 69 yards, had just 12 touchdowns, and then had six interceptions. Those are definitely not light em up type numbers that would scare me. He led an offense that was blown out in four of its seven losses, losing 51-6 to to Penn State, 45-14 to to the self-proclaimed 2017 national champions, UCF Knights, 24-3 to Miami, and 42-10 to to Clemson. No shame in that last one, but still, that wasn't quite the ACC championship game 
we were all hoping for. Running backs Darren Hall and Quadri Allison, aka two 1,000 plus yard rushers last season, and Darren Hall, who absolutely killed us in 2018, running for over 220 yards and three touchdowns, are both gone. Allison had 1,213 yards and 11 touchdowns in 2018. All in all, I respect Pitt and I congratulate them for making the ACC championship game last year. At the expense of our two overtime losses against Georgia Tech and Virginia Tech in the final two games of last season, as well as blowing it against you guys. But I don't see the Panthers being able to keep up with our momentum that we have going on in Charlottesville. I like you guys to be competitive, but I like us to win by a fair margin. Let's go Wahoos. Eh, fair enough, but incorrect. I'm telling you, in week one and throughout the entire season, you're going to see a completely new Pittsburgh offense, and it's something we can really look forward to here in Pantherland. For instance, in a recent interview, wide receiver Aaron Matthews said this, it's only practice nine of the season and I feel like I have more touches than all of my three years combined here. That tells me that we're opening up the playbook and I like our talent when we do just that. Pitt in a close one. Go Panthers. Cheers, fellas. My first cordial debate. I really appreciate it. I was kind of getting tired of uh, so much animosity in the other ones. Make sure you comment below who you think is going to win this one, and don't forget to include a score. The season is edging closer and closer, and while I have, of course, been coming up with these previews, I've been working on a couple tricks and surprises up my sleeve. And a little bit of a comical series that I think you're really going to enjoy. If you want to see what that is, subscribe right here to the channel. I really appreciate all your support. Every single week of the college football season, I'll be posting at least five videos, and I look forward to creating the most fun and awesome material for you each week. For now, I have more work to do, so I appreciate you stopping by, and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah.